Next question is from Helen Ack. What are the pros and cons of using a lifting belt? Oh, good. See, usually the question is, do I need one or why should I use one or not? But mm. I like this. Pros and cons. I do think there are pros and cons to a lifting belt. So the obvious one is, well, if you're going to compete in an event that allows you to use a, a lifting belt, you should train in one because there's a skill and technique to it and you just want to get good at it. Um, but now let's talk about the pros and cons for the average lifter. One of the cons of lift of using a lifting belt is that it it's a different form of core stability, or uh, to put it differently, it's a different muscle recruitment pattern with core stability with the belt. So when you wear a belt, you've got this external force or, or external thing around your waist, and the way that your core develops uh, or creates stability with a belt is it pushes out against the belt, and then that creates more stability. When you don't wear a belt, it's a little different. So it's, it's a lot of activation of the core in both of them, because the argument used to be, oh, you wear a belt, you get less core activation. Not true. You get just as much core activation. It's different, though. I mean, the argument you can make, though, Sal, is it's a lot different. It's, I mean, it, it it's is. the complete opposite. Yeah. One of them, you're training to push the Basically core out. drawing in and bracing. The other one, you're, out. Yeah, you're teaching to draw in, which are different skills. It's different skills. So that would be a con, right? Like, why would you want to get stronger in a way in the gym that you're not going to be able to really apply as much in everyday life? So there's one con. Now I'll give you a pro. The pro is it, it can allow you, because it does provide some more core stability you can probably generate on your own, it does allow you to overload some really strong body parts like legs, so like squats with the belt. Mm. You'll be able to add 10, 15, 20. Some people can add 30 more pounds when they know how to use a belt really well. Um, deadlifts, you can use more weight, so now you can overload the back a little bit more. Overhead press, for some people, it allows them to lift 10, 15 more pounds with their shoulders. So there's that argument there. So you know that would be, I guess, the two pros and cons. I will say this. I almost never had an everyday client yeah. use a belt. Almost never. But also, full disclosure, I use a belt. I use a belt when I squat and I deadlift. And that's just because I trained that way since I was a kid. Yeah. And I'm too lazy to train well, out of it. Other than, yeah, competing. I mean, I have pretty much all cons. But um, in terms of... I was trying to think of that in terms of like breathing or like belly breathing. Mm. If you didn't have a belt on where it's advantageous to focus on pushing out and bracing in that fashion. I don't know if that correlates, which I don't think it does. Like I, I can't think of a real life application without the belt where you're trying to, you know, promote that type of a mechanism. But um, yeah, like for the most part, I just, I think it's good. Like let's say in, in a situation where you're really, uh, pressing yourself to kind of go beyond your your natural limits yeah. um, to acclimate to a belt and then start to build that type of strength and, and support uh, because it does, I mean, here's the thing, when you have really heavy weight, uh, you don't want to have to be conscious of too many things at the same time. You want to kind of have that uh, aid and support when mm -hmm. it's it's a competitive environment. So I I definitely see some benefit to that. Well, an another pro uh, when you walk in wearing a belt, you look serious. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, especially you know if your name's on it. Yeah, yes, yeah. Oh, yes. Beast. I That's mean, right. it's yeah. Yeah, yeah. if you, you have a nickname name. or your last name on the back of your belt when you walk in. <laughs> Not many people think that it's your first time in the gym. So there definitely is a little bit of street cred that comes with carrying a belt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as far as a pro. Honestly, I, I'm kind of like Sal. I don't use it as much as Sal does, um, but I have trained myself to use it. So I do like to pull it out every once in a while. Not very often, though. Like I have to be chasing a PR or like really going heavy for the day for yeah. me to pull it out and just kind of see where I'm at. And the truth is uh, what I know now uh, if I were to, st if I was starting all over on my weightlifting journey, knowing that I have no desire to be a power lifter and get into that category at all, I probably would never use one. I agree. Because, because same thing. Yeah. I mean, I just, but I have used it enough times that I know how to use it. And so it's an advantage, right? So like I, I can deadlift and squat and overhead press more weight with the belt than I can without. Yeah. So it's purely an ego thing. Sometimes I feel like getting in there and pushing more weight than I normally would push. And so I know I can strap the belt on and I know I can get an extra 3% to 5% out of my lift. And so I yeah. do it. But if I were to train a client or train myself from from the base uh, up again 
I wouldn't use it because it doesn't have, to your point, Justin, it doesn't have any real application in the real world. And in fact, if anything, it could crutch you because you're used to pushing out on that. And if you were in real world, bending over to pick the couch up or my son or do something and I were to try and brace that way, uh, I could potentially hurt myself instead of bracing inward and supporting myself like you're supposed to. Yeah. Now I got to ask you uh, if this is still a thing. Uh, in the physique world in terms of wearing the belt as sort of a waist shaping waist yeah. trainer. Yes. Yep. Yes. And it's part so of still happening. It's part of the justification uh, for them to defend themselves when they get caught doing a tricep push down on the cable machine. Mm. So if you get if you catch a men's physique bodybuilder guy uh, doing tricep push downs or cable curls and they have the belt on you're almost certain that they're doing it with the intent of they have it sucked in really tight like a waist trainer and they think they're shrinking their waist. Yeah. So I've seen people wear weight belts on so seated dumb. machine exercises. Yeah. Like, wow. Well, it, yeah. Became, wow. it became a very uh, popular fashion statement in the last decade or so. It really it wasn't that... I don't remember it being that popular when we were first like lifting. You know who popularized it for a second? Mm. Uh, Charles Glass. Uh, he, by the way, one of the best bodybuilder trainers uh, ever, right? And and this is this. I had to say that because there's a difference between a bodybuilder trainer and a if you trained everyday average person. When you're training these highly developed, extreme, extremely gifted genetic, you know, anomalies who are on anabolic steroids and all that stuff, then sometimes this kind of stuff makes sense. It's an extreme sport, and that's what he did. He would put his athletes. In a weight belt, because remember the issue started happening in the 90s where bodybuilders would get so big, they'd get that distended belly. Uh, and yeah. so he says that it, it helped. I don't know if it did or not, but that's kind of why it became popular and why you would see them wearing a belt when they did seated you know, bicep curls and stuff like that. The irony of that, though, is I would actually make the case that that probably made it worse because, it, again, like you said, it, train, yeah, you it trains it the core to push out versus draw in. The vacuum maneuver yeah. and teaching uh, bodybuilders to do the vacuum yeah. more I think would have tremendous value because sure. then you would be you naturally kind of hold your stomach. In and a also, bit more. you don't you don't activate the core less by working out in the belt. You right. activate it the same amount. It's yeah. just activated it's different. different, totally different. Yep. Yeah, I, you know, here's the thing. Like for me, I started using it as a kid because I got introduced to it by powerlifters who taught me how to squat, and they told me you got to wear a belt. So I did. And now years ago, I used to use uh, wrist straps a lot when I would work out. All because bodybuilders did. So I read the magazine. So I did. It took me a year, maybe a year and a half, to get my grip to catch up to my back strength. I had to go through this whole process, getting my hands stronger. Getting rid of the belt now would take me another year or two to really get you know comfortable. I just don't, I'm lazy to do it. This is why I still use it. And I have a very interesting relationship with a weight belt. It's become like my cape. You know, like I pull it out. It's the same one I've had forever. In fact, I gave the one I had when I was 16 away to one of my clients because it was so tattered and beat up. And Did he, you start coming out to like dramatic movie theme song music? No. Like our friend? No, I'm not like Lane. <laughs> okay. yeah, no. no, but I had this belt forever and I gave it when I finally stopped training clients when we you know went full time with Mind Pump. I gave it to him as a gift and whatever. And I still have another one that I got when I was 19. It's the one I still, it's a blue one I still use. So I got this interesting thing with weight belts, but if I, I what you said is so true. If I could go back in time, yeah. I would have never used it because I, I, there's no need. Yeah, because you're not going to be a power lifter. Either, either yeah. am I. I had no intentions to do that, and yeah. so then it really has no real reason why you would want to train with it. Yeah. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here, or you can find other clips over here, and be sure to subscribe.